Hi everyone, it's Misty here. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to an update video. How you doing? I hope you're doing well. If you are new here, hello, welcome. I don't think very many people are new here. Uh, but if you are, thank you so much for joining me. So in this today's video, I'm just going to kind of catch you up, tell you where we've been, what's been going on, kind of chat with you about the blood work I had drawn, at my doctor's appointment, um, what's going on this week, etc. I will probably have a second um, update video for you Friday, maybe this weekend. Um, it's a busy week. So, yeah. So the last time I saw you guys, I believe I was heading to the doctor. Did I come back with blood work? I don't think, I don't think I did. Let me check, I honestly cannot remember. I have the memory of a gnat. No, okay, so the last video I shared was the one where um, I talked about how disability affects your marriage. But um, we were waiting for blood work, I believe. I don't remember I talked about blood work in that video. So anyway, long story short, I've been fasting, I've been carnivore, I've been keto, and nothing has been able to get my blood sugars down to a level that is good. So I went and saw my regular doctor, and I think I told you guys before I went, I'm like, my blood sugar is going to be high. My A1C is going to be high. I said if it's not at least 10, I would, like, I knew it's going to be at least 10. And I was right. Um, my A1C was 10.5. That's the highest it's been, shit, since I've been with Rob, I think. And that was, like... Back in 2009, the beginning of 2010, um, I'd had to go off insulin because I'd lost my, like I'd left my job, I didn't have insurance, etc. So yeah, um, I, it was really hard for me to get that number because as I've said, I've been fasting. Um, I fasted over 2000 hours. I did a 21 day fast in January. Um, there's absolutely nothing that I have been eating before then that should have contributed to causing my blood sugars to be elevated. So my doctor was like, Misty, he's like, you're gonna have to go on something. He said, especially if you're getting a steroid with your infusion. So he started me on Ozempic. I've basically been on every class of drug and I've had an issue with every class of drug. Um, for So Ozempic is in the same family as Victosa and Trulicity. Um, I was on Victoza for a while. It really worked, but it also caused um, thyroid nodules. They were not, they were benign, so they weren't cancerous, but still they were causing nodules on my thyroid. So I wasn't the most excited about taking it, but um, it does seem to be helping. I am currently on the lowest dose, which is 25 milligrams. It's either this Friday or the next Friday, I bump up to 50 milligrams, and I believe you can bump up to 100 milligrams if necessary. Um, my blood sugar has still been elevated. Some of that has to do with the fact that we went on vacation and I did not stay keto, um, but I'll talk about that in just a second. And some of it is again, getting a steroid. So this, I'm filming this on Tuesday. So yesterday was the 19th and I went and got another infusion. Um, my blood sugar was like 238. <laughs> By the time the steroid worked its way through my IV, I was already in like 320, 330s. And it's just, it's been probably around 400 um, for the, since then. So Rob and I went on vacation. It wasn't, I guess it was a vacation. We left on July the 3rd and he drove us, yes, us, me, Roxy, Rob, <laughs> to Massachusetts. So the first time, um, the, on our way there, we did it in two days. On the way back, we did it in three. I had suggested three on the way there, but someone was a little stubborn about it. So anyway, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Um, like I said, we took our cat, and the whole reason for the trip was, number one, he had to get out of the house. I mean, we've, you guys, just like most people, we've really been stuck in the house. I mean, he's been doing all that he can do to keep me safe because I am immune compromised. So he was basically going to get groceries, and that was really the only, the only thing he was doing to leave the house. So around Memorial Day, we talked about possibly going to Austin 
or something like that. But even just a few nights in Austin was gonna cost like almost a thousand dollars. So I said, why don't we just take a trip to New England? <laughs> I was like, we could rent a car and rent a hotel room, you know, for just a you know just a little bit more money than that so that's exactly what we did we drove the first night there we stayed somewhere in kentucky um and then the next night we stayed in framingham um so that was july 4th july 5th we moved to a hilton in woburn and that's where we ended up staying until the 12th when we headed home so I had asked for a handicap accessible room and initially we were in a roll-in shower room which meant that if you were in a wheelchair you could roll into the shower. The first day I took a shower the entire bathroom flooded and I mean flooded. There had to be an inch of water in the bathroom and I was just like what the hell. I was like and Rob was there to help me clean it up but it's like how the hell can someone who is by themselves in a wheelchair clean this up the it, there was no drain like it it just wasn't it just didn't work out it was on the first floor so he went to see if there was another accessible room available they said yes this one had a bench in the shower but it was on the sixth floor and I thought you know what it's fine it'll be all right <laughs> famous lost words so that was on the fifth so um, about 1.30 a.m. Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday, um, we had a fire alarm <laughs> go off. We woke up and it was so fucking loud. And that's the first time I've ever experienced anything like that. I mean, I've never, ever, ever been in a hotel that had a fire alarm go off. So again, we were on the sixth floor. We were on the sixth floor. And Roxy immediately ran and hide under the bed. We couldn't coax her out. So he and I got dressed. We made our way down the stairs. I don't know how I managed to do it, guys. I don't know how I did it. If I had to go upstairs, I wouldn't have made it. Because downstairs is not as bad. But trying to go upstairs is, it's like I can handle maybe four steps before my legs and my back just say, uh-uh, no way. So halfway down, we met a guy, um, we met a woman and a man, a couple, I'm guessing, and he was counting like steps and counting floors. And I, we had moved out of the way because again, I was walking really, really slow. Thank God there wasn't an actual fire or the fireman would have to come get me. But um, he had MS and he was struggling and he was not on the first floor either. So um, by the time we made it down, it was like I could barely move and luckily it's where we came out there was like a little um like a raised bed that had like concrete and I sat there while Rob went to go check on it because I guys I was freaking the fuck out because leaving Roxy was the most traumatizing thing I've ever probably done um I was so upset and Rob's like he's like I think it's a false alarm he said they were having issues earlier he said you know, if it's not, if there's smoke, I'll run up and get her. And I was just thinking, at the time I wasn't even thinking, but I was like, no, I can't let him run up into a burning building to get our cat. We'd have to send the firemen or something. So luckily it was a false alarm, but that really threw a wrench in our week because after that I was just so flipping weak. My legs... Like my legs were like jello. I could barely walk. I could barely stand. Um, what do I do the next day? I don't even remember. Um, Wednesday, we drove to East Providence to meet an online friend. She and I have been online friends for 20 years and we never met. So we did that. We went and had lunch. Um, Friday, Elsa, Elsa visited <laughs> Massachusetts. And most of the area was under flash flood warnings. So we were planning to meet up with his family to go to dinner and we weren't able to do that. But on um, Saturday, we did. So we got to the sole proprietor in Worcester. If you were in that area, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Um, but they had like two little stairs and I was barely able to walk them. Barely. Excuse me, I needed a drink of water. So then Saturday, so that was Saturday. Sunday, we were just sitting around in our hotel room. We were supposed to go visit her, his sister at her apartment. Neither one of us thought anything about it until we were halfway there. 
And he was like, does her apartment have stairs? And she said, yeah, there's about 12 or 15. I was like, there's no way in hell. So he had to turn around and take me back to the hotel. And then he went ahead and went and spent a few hours with her. And when he got back, we were just sitting around the hotel room. I was like, we should just go home tomorrow. And he's like, you think? I'm like, yeah. It's like, you know, Roxy's, you know, Roxy's been out of her environment for a week now. I was like, we're basically just sitting here doing exactly what we <laughs> would do if we were at home. The only other thing we were going to do is go back to, there's a restaurant in Waltham, Waltham, I think it's called Joseph's 2, T-W-O. You guys have the best breakfast we've ever had. Like I've ever had in my life. We were thinking about going back there on Monday, but we weren't like, we weren't doing any kind of touristy things or anything like that. So we went ahead and came back. Um, we took three days to come back. So we left on Monday and we got here about Wednesday afternoon. And ever since then, I think we've both been vegetables. Um, it was especially hard for Rob because he had to do all the driving. I was like, if we'd rented a Tesla, maybe I could have helped, but I, I just, I just can't, I can't drive like that anymore. So, and it was a lot of bringing all of our suitcases in you know, every time we stayed somewhere and then he would have to set up Roxy's litter box and her food dish and water. Um, she did fine on the way up there, but she did not do fine on the way back. And we didn't reach out to our vet and get any kind of tranquilizer or anything. Um, Rob didn't want to, but if we go, if we ever travel again, we'll try, I mean, and travel with her, we will definitely fly and we will definitely get her tranquilizer. She the first day on the way up there, she meowed for probably three or four hours, but then she fell asleep and slept the rest of the day. The next day, she slept all day, no problem. On the way back, <laughs> every day for four or five hours, she would meow or cry, and it was just heart-wrenching. And she wasn't in a little bit of carrier either. I don't know if I shared pictures of it, but it took up almost the entire back seat of the Inquinox we were in. It was tall enough for her to walk around, um, we had her blanket in there. We offered her water, which we gave her treats. Um, she didn't have to go to the bathroom, but she's the type of, I mean, she, she sleeps 12 or 13 hours a day. So she's not one that uses the litter box often. So we didn't have any issue with that. And like I said, right when we got to the hotel, Rob would put down um, her litter box and then her water while I sat in a car with um, her and that way she wasn't left by herself. So that's kind of how the trip was. Initially, I thought, okay, I'm going to do one carby meal a day. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to eat what I want to eat. And I did. The food was really good, minus the diner where I got meatloaf and mashed potatoes, and it was disgusting. But all of the seafood we had were was amazing. The crab cakes I had there were amazing. I had a $75 lobster roll, which was crazy, but... Um, up there, there's no really prices anywhere because lobster is market price and who knew? And I didn't even realize it was a pound. It was a pound of lobster, but you guys, it was delicious and I ate it. <laughs> and then at the sole proprietor on um, Saturday, we had, I had what's called a lobster and a lobster and crab pie, which is basically lobster and crab poached in butter and then covered in Ritz cracker crumbs you could have left off the cracker crumbs. It was delicious. And I had that with lobster mac and cheese. So like I wasn't on plan at all. And then we got back and I was like, okay, I need to weigh. Cause I thought I gained probably 30 pounds. Nope. I weighed in at 372. And then yesterday morning I weighed in at 369. No, 368. So I actually lost weight while we were gone. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact is we were only eating once, sometimes twice a day. And I was moving way more than I move when I'm here. Cause just the walk from the elevator to the lobby was quite a hike. Um, so I was able to do it though. And that, and that felt really good. There were only a couple of times where I felt like I may have needed my walker or we kind of changed our plans so I wouldn't have to walk a lot. Um, again, if we hadn't had that issue with the fire alarm, I probably would have had an easier week, but that just kind of, that just kind of, like that just kind of ruined me <laughs> I don't know what else to say the next night I could barely sleep because I had so much anxiety because I was worried about it going off again I was worried about Roxy so I I was glad to go but I'm I'm really glad to be home so Monday I had my third dose of the Symphony Aria it is working so well 
Um, I, she said 90% and I said probably 80%. I said not 90%, but definitely 80%, which is such a relief. Um, I do have something on my knee. Um, and it, I don't know if it's like a floating bone or what, but I don't have it. I have it on my left knee, but I don't have it on my right knee. So she said we could get it x-rayed and I said, well, let's just see if it gets bigger or if it moves or something. And if it does, then we'll x-ray it for sure. So that's something that we have to keep an eye on. Um, I'm also having issues with, this is a trigger finger. So I had a thumb release in 2017, but now this finger is a trigger finger. If you don't know what that is, basically where the tendon gets stuck and um, it causes, it's, it's hurt, it hurts for sure. And then it causes a swelling and then like it gets stuck, like I can't really move my finger more than that. Most mornings I can't, oh, I can do it like that. Most mornings I can't even bend it. So I'm gonna reach out to the plastic surgeon um, to see if we're gonna just do another cortisone shot or if he thinks it's finally time to have surgery and release it. I don't know what's gonna happen. He's really good though, cause you can't even see my scar. And then Thursday we go, um, I go and see the new endocrinologist. I am optimistic and hopeful. I'm anxious. I, I have the worst anxiety now meeting new doctors because I've just met so many that are absolute awful, like just so fucking awful. Um, I don't think people realize, like everybody's like, you're fat and you're a drain on the healthcare system. I pay for all of my care. So I'm not a drain on the health system, but you just don't realize how hard it is to get good quality care when you are a fat person. Because I'd say 45% of doctors are like, lose weight, you'll be fine. And that's just not always the case. I lost a really close friend to esophageal cancer because he was overweight and his doctor just told him to take in acids. And finally, he ended up in the emergency room because he was throwing up blood and come to find out he had stage four esophageal cancer and they would have caught it sooner if his doctors had taken him seriously. So it's, it's really hard, like I fight. I fight, I fight, I fight. And so anytime I go see a new doctor, number one, I bring Rob with me. And number two, I have the worst, <laughs> the worst white coat anxiety. Um, and I'm, I'm really, really hopeful. She's a little bit younger. Um, it's a woman. Uh, I, I normally prefer a man, it doesn't really matter. I prefer a man when it comes to like an OBGYN because I had a woman doctor almost kill me because she wasn't taking me seriously. That's a story for another day. But when it comes to like general health, it doesn't matter the sex or the gender, it just matters are they gonna look at me and see a patient and not look at me and see a fat patient. Because like I've said on and on and on, there's obviously something else going on with my body, something that we're missing because there's, like I said, there's nothing in my diet prior to vacation and prior to that blood work that would cause me to be, cause my blood sugars to be so high. So we'll see what happens. And then on Friday, I see my pain management doctor. Um, I have to make a decision if I'm gonna have a facet block in my neck or in my lower back. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with my lower back. I think that makes the most sense. Um, my neck, I can move a bit, like I can move a bit around or put something on it to really kind of calm it down. The Latakine Patrick's work so well, the Blue Emu works so well, but I have a lot of strain and stuff on my lower back. So I think it makes the most sense to do that. So I have a feeling that's gonna be scheduled in the next few months. And then finally, I see my neurologist next month um, and I have a feeling I'm gonna start IVIG therapy. It's basically where they, they filter somebody's blood and they give it back to you with um, their antibodies. And it's a way to treat the myasthenia. It's also a way to treat other, um, I think it's another, uh, other, um, autoimmune diseases as well. And then last but not least is we are meeting with bathroom designers um, for our master bathroom. We're ready to get started on that. Um, it's the last room in our house that we haven't, like we haven't touched it. It basically looks like it did in 1997 when it was built. Um, I've been looking into more of a wet room design. We initially just wanted a, um, like a, like a roll-in shower kind of thing. So there's no, no curb, I guess that's what they call it. 
But the more I've been looking around Pinterest, the more I've been looking around Google, I think a wet room kind of design where there's just a partition and um, the rest of it's open, I think that might be what we go with. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, yeah, but I'm back, back on plan, um, hoping that the Ozempic helps and that it's not something I have to be on for the rest of my life. But yeah, so that's it. That's a lot. I hope you're doing well. Um, as far as mentally, I feel like I'm doing okay. I feel like I'm doing, I'm in a better spot than I was then. I think this vacation, while it was traumatizing, it was also necessary. Like I, I am an extroverted introvert. I think most Tauruses are extroverted <laughs> introverts. So it's like I want to be around people, but I'm also a little bit of an introvert. So it was nice to see family. It was nice to meet a friend. It was nice just to hang out with my husband and go look at architecture and just go eat and just just kind of reconnect. Um, even though we're in the same house all day, every day, it was, it, it was much needed for sure. So I hope you guys are doing well. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. But um, so yeah, I'll try to catch you guys again on Friday and maybe Saturday. It's just gonna depend on how I feel. I have a lot of a lot of things to get um, done. I need to get this room cleaned up. Um, one of the designers is coming on Monday to look at our bedroom and stuff and I wanna make sure that um, all the rooms look okay. <laughs> so anyway, rambling. I love you guys so much. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.